eu, eu lembro quando eu I remember tive esse encontro that when I had my encounter with the Lord Jesus which changed my life and the course of my life it was a 180 degree turn it changed my heart my thoughts everything in my life and it was the happiest day in my life the happiest one there was no other day more precious than that one and that happened 50 years ago I never forgot that in this encounter I cried a lot I was completely overwhelmed with the presence of God but it was a cry of happiness a cry of joy of pleasure a cry of happiness you know that the foundation the beginning of the human beings suffering is called doubt doubt is the mother of all disgraces of human beings doubt is the mother of all disgraces of human beings because doubts cause your spirit to be shaken afraid feeble weak doubt doesn't allow you to have peace so what happens you who already had an experience with God you know what I'm talking about what changed in your life what was your great transformation what was your greatest conquest it happened when you had an encounter with the Lord Jesus for when we had that encounter our doubts fell to the ground and that sense of certainty began to live in us a conviction a certainty of God's existence for we had an encounter with him a certainty that we can do all things confidence self-confidence and above all confidence in God so sometimes you are so adrift lost in this world because of your needs spiritual problems love life problems family problems marriage health problems you get so lost so adrift among so many problems that doubts are increasing your sufferings increasing your sufferings and when you arrive here I believe you feel that sense of well-being it's not the final result but you come here and hear the word of God you hear the word of God for some moments you forget about the voices of this world forget about the voice of husband wife parents friends anyway you know that we have over 7 billion human beings in the world which means that I'm over 7 billion voices in this world yes or no consequently consequently there are trillions of voices in this world 
And you have two ears. We have two ears. We hear. Apart from the inner voices, the voice of evil, we also have the voices around us, media, etc. So you become a sum of thoughts and ideas of the world. Yes, of the world. It's like what the Apostle Paul says. There are, it may be, so many kinds of languages in the world. And none of them is without significance. We were discussing about that a couple of weeks ago. That when you confess your failures, when you confess your defeat, the more you confess your defeat, your failures, the more it increases, the more it grows. Yes or no? So you tell the person that is closer to you, the person that you love, or a person that you have some kind of intimacy with, you tell that person your problems, your pains, and that same person with a good intention to help you brings a message that will increase those doubts within you. Yes or no? And if you listen to another person, then there will be another counseling and another counseling and you will get lost and lost with so many counselings. For one says something, another one says something different. So you end up saying, which counseling am I going to follow? And worst of all is that those advices will just add more doubts to your life. So when you come here, you are downcast, oppressed. And then with the word, with the prayer of faith, with the message of faith, you forget about those voices of the world. And because of that, faith arises within you. You begin to believe in God and also in yourself. Therefore, you become stronger. Because deep, deep down, what is happening? Those doubts are being removed, taken away, and your level of faith is going up. And it makes you feel well. It's a great sense of well-being. But it doesn't solve the problem completely. Why? Because what is the point of feeling very well inside the church, and when you go out there, You go back to the same old thoughts. Yes or no? Here in church, you just hear one voice. My voice. My voice. But when you are out there, there's the voice of the father, the mother, the child, boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife, etc. Each person brings a different kind of thought. You know very well, we all have different minds. Yes or no? We all have different minds. Each one of us have a different kind of thought. So now try to figure out all these thoughts coming in at once. What happens to you? That's why it's very important to seek this encounter with the Lord Jesus. There are a bunch of people well informed about Jesus. There are a bunch of people who are full of knowledge, biblical knknowledge, but they don't know the author of life yet. They haven't had the encounter with God yet. They don't know Jesus. I mean, 
personally. I don't know if you can say that, but the Apostle Paul said, I know whom I have believed. I know whom I have believed. I can say that, I know whom I have believed. Because it has been 50 years that I've been in faith, continually, permanently. I didn't come out and came back to church. No, I surrendered fully and I stick to my decision until today. It has been 50 years. If you came out and came in, came out and came in, it's because you never really came in. You have been always out because you never had your encounter with God. You have got to know Jesus. Doesn't he exist? Don't you believe he exists? Think with me. Do you believe he exists? Yes or no? So if he exists, you have to know him. Or not. But Bishop, are you not demanding so much from me? No, I'm just trying to open your understanding. Your conscience. God is an intelligent being. And he doesn't accept praises and worships from emotional people. Praises out of emotions. No. He wants praises, adorations from intelligent people. People who reason. Yes, I know whom I have believed. Oh Lord, I believe in you. I love you because I know who you are. I know the one who has been doing great things in my life. So you have got to know him. And in order to know him, you have to be thirsty for him. You have to desire him. And who is going to show Jesus to you? Who is going to introduce Jesus to you? Or reveal the Lord Jesus to you? Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is the person who reveals Jesus to us. For Holy Spirit reveals within you the Lord Jesus. And that's the great difference between the religious people and us. The religious ones accept things without thinking, questioning. They accept things anyhow. You can't be religious. The religious ones use their emotional faith and are led by their emotions. But a person who is truly Christian or a person that hasn't become a Christian yet, but he says, no, I want to see Jesus. I want to know him. I want to know him. One day, the Greek people went to Jesus' disciples and said, we want to see Jesus. And then the disciples were saying, oh, they want to see Jesus. And the disciples went to Jesus and said, there are some Greeks who are there and they want to know you. The Greeks were the elite, the most intellectual people at that time. You see, intelligence, head, reason. They said, we want to see Jesus. And the Lord Jesus said to the disciples, now it's time for the Son of Man. He was talking about himself. It's time for the Son of Man to be glorified. In other words, he said, have you seen this multitude that has come to me? These people came because they were hungry, they want to be fed, they want to be healed, set free. 
They came because of their needs. But these Greeks are different. They haven't come to me because of a physical need or material need. But they have come because of a spiritual need. They want to know me. Do you see the difference? Why are you here today? Have you come here today just to fulfill a ritual? Have you come here just to receive a miracle, healing? Okay, we are going to pray for you. Oh, Bishop, I have come here to solve my love life problem. All right. But the Lord Jesus will just reveal himself to those who say, Yes, I've come here because I want to know Jesus. Those who have come for the miracles will get the miracle. Healing, etc. They will get healed. But those who want to know Jesus will receive that revelation which is given by the Holy Spirit. It's not by me. It's not by me. It's God's Spirit who has to manifest in you and speak within you and reveal to you the Lord Jesus. You won't see him with your physical eyes, but rather with the spiritual ones. For Holy Spirit gives us spiritual eyes in order for us to see what is unseen, for you to believe in what is impossible. And when you see Jesus, your doubts will go to the pit of hell. You break free. You are free. Why? Because your lack of peace comes from the doubts that you keep within you. Your doubts make you weak. Doubts bring fear, worries, and consequently, your weaknesses. Doubts simply neutralize your peace. There is no peace while there is doubt. But if you have faith, then doubts are eliminated and you have peace. You have got to know Jesus. You have got to know him. Because if you don't know him, you might spend your whole life in church. But your presence here will be worthless. It will not solve anything whatsoever. Use your mind. Use your intelligence. Your reason. For you to achieve what the Lord Jesus wants to give you.